So we've been talking a lot about media lately on this channel, basically pretty much all I've been talking about since 2023 started. Now I made a video on Tuesday talking about this list I found on Conservapedia, which basically was outlining the greatest supposed conservative games. And among those games, it included like Red Dead Redemption, or Metal Gear Solid Rising, or Fallout, you know, loads of pretty much left-leaning games. It was saying they were conservative for one reason or another, and it was really, really bizarre to see how much they tried to manipulate these games into seeming like they promote conservatism in any way, when in reality, they basically criticize conservatism in every way. So, you guys have asked for this in the comments of the last video, and I felt like because that video did well, why don't we do a follow-up? There is also a list on Conservapedia of the greatest conservative movies. So in terms of movies overall, I did not feel like the list was as bad as the games one, because I can see in a lot of these instances how they like these movies and why these movies in fact do promote a conservative message. But don't worry, there are still loads of examples on this list of very, very leftist films being described as pro-conservative or at least films that criticize either our society and the status quo or things conservatives love. So we have something like Fight Club, for example, which has a lot of left-wing themes and a lot of things to say about Western masculinity. And then we have other stuff like 2012's Judge Dredd, which they seemingly think promotes like the system in that film and promotes the judges as a like a good thing when the point of Judge Dredd isn't to promote this world and promote the judges as symbols of virtue and stuff we should want in society the same way like Robocop doesn't promote making Robocops. And we are going to talk about like some on the list that are pro-conservative and are fair enough, but I just thought it'd be fun to do another one of these since you guys like the first one. And weirdly enough, probably the video tomorrow is also going to be about media as well. If you guys want to watch these media videos, then I'll just keep making them because I really enjoy making them. But before we go any further, please like the video and in the comments, kind of like the last video, what is the worst example you've seen of a conservative saying that a left-leaning film is actually a pro-conservative one? Obviously, a lot of you guys will say, well, Fight Club, maybe something like American Psycho, Blade Runner, loads of these films I've actually covered on this channel, I've seen these all been used to say that they promote a conservative message or at least an anti-leftist message, but let me know down in the comments. Also follow me on social media, at The Cavernacle on Twitter, but also on Instagram. Instagram is just a better way to interact with me. And also if you care about my travels around Southeast Asia, I'm currently in Thailand. I post a lot about that and I archive it all in my highlight reels on my profile itself. So if you care about what I've been up to over the last six or so months, go check that out. Also, consider becoming a patron. I post exclusive travel content on the Patreon page. There's two videos up at the moment and other benefits include getting access to the Discord server and getting access to my Nintendo Switch friend code and also check out the subreddit and check out my second channel. The links to everything are in the description. So on my video about games, we went through what Conservapedia is and you guys might be asking, well, what is Conservapedia? I did about a four minute breakdown on the last video. I'm not going to do that again. Basically, Conservapedia is a conservative clone of Wikipedia, basically because the creator felt like Wikipedia had a liberal bias, it was anti-conservative, was anti-American, was anti-Christian, so they made this alternative. They say it's about sticking truth to the facts, but it's pretty clear nearly everything written on here is very opinion-based, saying that Joe Biden is like the dictator of the United States or Bernie Sanders is like some Marxist Leninist subversive. Go check out the site if you care about that. But again, they had a greatest conservative video games list. And now we're going to talk about the greatest conservative films list. You guys can go look at this for yourself. And I'm just going to read the ones I actually know about and I know definitely don't promote conservatism. So I'm just going to start off with one where I feel like it's kind of weird, but they say it's pro-conservative. So 1917 by Sam Mendes. The film is about two British soldiers who have to deliver a message to another British army to call off an attack. 
if they do not reach the army in enough time, the Germans will massacre the British forces. Not only does this film show a realistic depiction of World War I, it also doesn't add unnecessary political correctness common in modern films. So I will say at least the author of this little entry into the greatest conservative movies didn't start crying that there are Indian soldiers clearly seen in the film in like two scenes because don't worry, there were a lot of conservatives who were crying that you saw Indian soldiers in the film despite them making up significant numbers of the British Empire's forces. I can also say maybe they didn't really notice it, but let's just say they did and they didn't care like some conservatives in the UK did. But also, I just don't really see how 1917 is really conservative. I mean, at its core, even if it isn't like an anti-war film, it feels like what you take away from it is, yeah, war is absolutely terrible, and this war specifically was pretty pointless and just ended the lives of so many young men on the battlefield. I'm not going to argue this film is like explicitly very leftist. I just do find it funny that they say it's pro-conservative. I'd say it's fairly politically neutral, made by a left-leaning director, Sam Mendes. So then they have Animal Farm. So the live-action adaptation of conservative text of the same name from George Orwell uses animals in the pretext of leveling harsh criticism against communism and Stalin. Unlike the source material, the film literally shows Animal Farm collapsing due to the excesses posed by Napoleon, an allegory for Stalin, which is ultimately justified due to the collapse of the Soviet Union years earlier under a similar reasons for Animal Farm's collapse. So George Orwell wasn't like the best socialist ever in that he was fairly in bed with the British state but he also wasn't a conservative person and 1984 and Animal Farm aren't like messages that socialism is terrible and communism is wrong. They're more so criticisms against Stalin and parts of the USSR. I'm not gonna get too hung up on someone thinking Animal Farm promotes conservatism, but at the same time, it's a bit more nuanced in that it's not necessarily saying communism will never work. It's more criticism against Stalin, but if you believe Stalin represents communism, maybe you'll find this film and this story to be anti-communist. Like I said, I believe they're misreading it, but it's not one I really care about because conservatives will just project their own opinions and they'll just say, well, it shows communism bad, so the film is pro-conservative. But here's where it gets, starts getting more fun. Um, so Judge Dredd, the Alex Garland movie from 2012, the one everyone likes. So based on the comic Judge Dredd, anti-drug war film where the villains are drug dealers and addicts who are portrayed as very sadistic individuals and the hero judge dread assisted by judge in training who is also a psychic is forced to fight them the film shows the bravery of police officers who do what's right while the film's main villain a female drug lord nicknamed mama tries to hinder their progress by calling in several corrupt judges who currently populate various courts in the US in real life to pervert justice and repeatedly violate the constitution to interfere with the honest judges. So I think this is one of the more funny ones because it completely misses the point of Judge Dredd. Like saying Judge Dredd promotes conservatism is absolutely insane. It's just like how police like idolize the Punisher when the Punisher is a criticism of the system and stuff like that. So if you guys don't know, Judge Dredd is like an anti-fascist, like, piece of work, like just the IP in general. It's inspired by both Franco Spain and Thatcher's Britain because the guy who created Judge Dredd grew up in Franco Spain and then moved to Thatcher's Britain. So it's based on both those societies and even the iconography of Judge Dredd in the comics and this eagle stuff, it's all meant to represent fascism. And of course, it's a complete fascist system. You have police that are the judge, jury and executioner who just go round and basically do these sentences out on like people who are poor. Although because of the film and the protagonist is Judge Dredd, I can see why people might think like, oh, he's like the anti-hero of the thing. Judge Dredd starring Carl Urban, he doesn't even like take off his helmet. He's just meant to be another faceless judge going into this very poor block of flats, which is run by a drug gang and then taking out the leader. Of course, the criminals are very, very brutal in this, but you can't read that film and the IP as a whole as anything other than a kind of like dark satire and criticism of fascism and fascist police states taken to like more like an extreme conclusion of this like dystopia. And Judge Dredd is like a very cool film and a very nice like sci-fi film. But to watch that film and then take away from it that Judge Dredd represents a system 
that is good and he's doing good by that system by being a part of it is absolutely insane and so, so funny. Like this is one of the worst examples of conservatives missing the point in that it says, yeah, conservatives, here's your authoritarian ideology. Doesn't it suck? Here's what dystopia it would inspire. Then conservatives watching that being like, oh, Judge Dredd is awesome. I want him in real life. If we look beyond the film, Judge Dredd just isn't like a very good person anyway. So then on the list, it has things like Dunkirk, but just like with 1917, it just seems to be projecting their own conservative values. I like Dunkirk a lot. I feel like it's a pretty subversive war movie in that you never really even see the Germans in the film until the end and they're like out of focus. So it has more like a universal message about like the horror of war and just how like scary war is. So I do like it for that. Although I wouldn't really say there's a massive political message. I would say maybe it's like a liberal interpretation of history about British spirits and obviously the mythicized stuff about the Dunkirk boats and stuff like that. But again, if he wants to read this as conservative, then fine. I don't really care about that one because I don't think Dunkirk has like a massive political message about left or right. I do think it has interesting themes about war, which may be coming from a more left-leaning person, but at the end of the day, I don't really care. But this one is funny, just like the Judge Dredd one. Fight Club, 1999. Fight Club is considered to be a conservative classic for audiences mature enough to handle the violence and language. It argues against the idea that society can alter or control our basic human nature. One of the characters rants against consumerism, which has led liberals to believe it is an anti-capitalist moral. But don't be fooled. In reality, it's pro-masculinity and warns society of the dangers of trying to suppress masculinity and promotes assertiveness and strength in men's minds and bodies. It really just hurts my brain that so many people think Fight Club is like a conservative movie. Like I'm not someone who has read around Fight Club, like read loads and loads about it, but I of course do know a fair bit about it from both watching it a few times and knowing what it's influenced. Like one of my favorite shows of all time is Mr. Robot, which is so directly influenced by so many elements of Fight Club, including the anti-capitalist nature of Fight Club and the anti-consumerist nature of Fight Club. For those of you who don't know about Fight Club, basically Fight Club talks a lot about like late 90s consumer capitalism. There are a lot of films that came out around this time that talk about like, you know, the end of history type neoliberal capitalist system, like American Beauty came out in the same year, Matrix came out in the same year, Fight Club came out in 1999 too. And basically the film ends with the guys insurgent group basically destroying some of the biggest companies that own like credit card debt and stuff like that to hopefully free people from the chains of neoliberal capitalism. And they just watch as these buildings all get destroyed by the group, the narrator slash Tyler Durden, actually started now maybe if you're like a very very religious protestant you would see the anti-consumerism as something pro-conservative but generally when you have like anti-capitalist elements they are directly countering like conservative narratives about capitalism because if you're a capitalist why do you hate consumer capitalism i don't really understand that so when it has all this stuff about like ikea furniture and just like his home and like the meaningless of office work and stuff like that that to me is a commentary about you know late 20th century capitalism and consumer capitalism doesn't seem very compatible with a conservative worldview and of course like i said the ending where they literally destroy a lot of the mechanisms of this capitalist system which is seen in a more like positive light i don't really think you can go into that film watch it and think this film is promoting capitalism at all because it really is criticizing capitalism and it's no wonder it's inspired a lot more critiques of capitalism in the future chief among them the best show of all time in my opinion Mr. Robot, which even has a cover of that Pixie song. Elliot, the main character, even has the same, like, lamp as Tyler Durden slash the narrator. And it has a kind of similar plot about overthrowing and destroying consumer capitalism. If you haven't watched Mr. Robot yet, please, please watch it. I guarantee, especially if you're left-leaning, you will not be disappointed that show. It is absolutely amazing. So because I've been talking about the capitalism stuff, you might think I ignore the masculinity stuff. This is the most wild part of it. Fight Club does not promote this version of masculinity. It's like a cautionary tale of what toxic masculinity and male insecurity can lead to. Like, of course, you know, from a left-wing perspective, the kind of outcome at the end of the movie is a good thing. But at the same time, people join this organization because of male insecurity. They literally organize to beat the hell out of each other in an underground fight club, which then becomes like an insurgent group. They do all these weird rituals, like all these chemical burns and stuff like that. And also Tyler Durden is not meant to be seen 
as a good person or a good representation of masculinity. Yeah, you enjoy the performance from Brad Pitt and you enjoy a lot of what he says because it's so out there, because it's so pretty much outrageous. But if you watch that movie and think Brad Pitt's character is awesome and is a positive display of masculinity and the Fight Club is a positive display of masculinity, you've completely missed the point of the film. And if you think altogether this film promotes conservatism, you're absolutely terrible at media analysis. You can see that this film is not promoting either capitalism or this version of masculinity that these men all gravitate towards. And ultimately, I think the film is even more relevant today because it really speaks about how the alienation and isolation under capitalism can lead to really bad things, especially for men. Like we're having this whole discourse about Andrew Tate and what men's problems are. And like I said in my video, I think it was last week, I said neoliberalism and patriarchy are what make men like fans of Andrew Tate and gravitate towards Andrew Tate. And that is pretty much the message of Fight Club as well. It is not promoting people like Andrew Tate and this ultra conservative worldview. You also have films like the Lord of the Rings trilogy as the best conservative movies. Like I'm not gonna argue that it's necessarily an outwardly conservative movie, but just like with the books themselves, I feel like Middle Earth is often just a canvas, anything you really want on the world. Like, I've made loads of videos about the work of Tolkien and how far-right types often like this because they can project their own worldview onto it, especially in Italy, the followers of people like Avola, they love Lord of the Rings because they believed it represented, especially the Shire, an ideal society they should go back to. And although I don't remember this, people say that the book is more nuanced in its representations of good versus evil, that's one thing that has really turned me off Lord of the Rings as I've gotten older. I do find the morality like very, very basic. And that's why I like something like The Witcher more where it's more nuanced and complicated. And you can see how that's more compatible with a conservative Christian worldview of like good versus evil, hereditary monarchy, supposed conservative values. And of course, there's not much diversity or woke politics in the original Lord of the Rings. So yeah, I'm not really gonna argue with someone that The Lord of Rings is a leftist film and doesn't promote conservatism. I just think it's the nature of the work where you can just project a lot of values on Middle Earth because that's just the nature of Tolkien's original world. Although you guys might not consider Zack Snyder films necessarily bastions of liberalism, of course Zack Snyder is pretty much speculated to be a libertarian because of his love for Ayn Rand. This reading of Man of Steel is absolutely hilarious and just Superman as a character. So apparently according to this list, Man of Steel, the origin story of Superman in the Snyderverse, is a pro-conservative movie, and let's get into the reasons why. Superman is portrayed as a Christ-like figure, and the film shows the bravery of the US military and shows you the theme of protecting the ones you love. The film also has an anti-illegal immigrant-like message as the villain, General Zod, plans to turn Earth into his dead planet, Krypton, an allegory for illegal aliens destroying American culture and changing it for their own purpose, during a climactic battle between Superman and Zod, a computer-generated avatar bearing the likeness of Jor-El, Superman's father, assists the Man of Steel and his human allies in fighting Zod and his forces. So there are some pro-family themes. So it hurts my brain so much that someone would think that Superman is a film against immigrants. And it's a film all about how illegal immigrants destroy culture. Like, that is absolutely insane. This whole point is undermined by the fact that Superman isn't human. Superman is an alien who falls to Earth and is adopted by humans who accept him happily. But part of the movie, the Man of Steel movie, is that his stepdad is so worried that people will not accept him if he reveals who he is. I don't know how you can watch that movie and understand the Superman character and think Superman is a me has a message of anti-illegal immigration. In terms of illegal immigrants, wouldn't Superman be like the biggest one ever? He's literally not even human. He comes from another planet. He's not just crossing national borders. He's crossing like planetary borders. So that is the most probably wild misinterpretation of a film. Like I don't necessarily like, like Zack Snyder's politics or like his movies. Like he completely ruined the message of Watchmen, the politics of 300 are trash as well. But I do not get the sense that Man of Steel was pushing a pro-anti-immigrant message. Like, I'd understand that reading a bit more if Superman was human. He's not human. 
and he kills Zod to protect humanity and protect the earth. Very illegal immigrant literally protects mankind from an evil guy. It's not like General Zod is shown to be representative of the good elements of Kryptonian society or something like that. And you have someone like Jor-El and the Superman family who are shown to be good aliens. So moving on, there's part of the list which has debatable whether conservative, which you feel like some of the other films would have fit better on this part of the list, but it's still as ridiculous. So let's go for a couple of these and see how they try and twist the movie into making it pro-conservative. So this one's quite wild. Full Metal Jacket by Stanley Kubrick. Although including a scene that seems more catered to the anti-war ideology featuring a door gunner slaughtering civilians during the Vietnam War with glee, the boot camp sequence was nonetheless shown in a realistic and to some extent inspiring light and Vietnam veterans also frequently stating that gunnery sergeant's advice saved them during Vietnam and also features a female Viet Cong soldier who was not shown in a positive light at all. Like, do people seriously watch Full Metal Jacket and take away the film is pro-US military, pro-war? Does anyone watch that boot camp scene and think that's inspiring and thinks that's a good depiction of the US military? Like I know for a lot of people in the time, it would have been like accurate to some extent, especially like Marine boot camp. But does anyone think this film promotes the US war in Vietnam as something positive? Do they depict US conservative ideology and militarism as something positive? Like it's not debatable whether this film is pushing a conservative message. It just like isn't to actually say the boot camp section is promoting conservatism is absolutely wild but here is an absolutely hilarious one from the past you guys might have watched this over the last month because it was christmas but it's a wonderful life which starred jimmy stewart a conservative and was made by frank capra who's also a conservative but again this film didn't seem to be promoting conservatism at all so it promotes the concept of self-worth and individualism ultimately and that choices do in fact matter and have consequences and ultimately promotes faith to a certain extent. However, it falsely teaches that humanism is what makes life worth living, marginalizes faith with a cartoonish depiction and demonizes capitalism as sadistic and greedy. So it realizes that the film demonizes capitalism, but also says it promotes the concept of self-worth and individualism. Ultimately, how does the film promote individualism? Yeah, maybe you feel sorry for George Bailey he can't go and do what he dreamed of in the film. But ultimately the film is about appreciating what you have and appreciating community because the community all come together to help save George Bailey after his uncle loses the money and he might go to prison and stuff like that to save him from this and save him from Potter. And they give him the money because he's such a good person and he's helped them all out throughout his life and he's cultivated great friendships. So the message of the movie is, yeah, capitalism is bad, which is recognizes, but also community is good and individualism isn't good. You want to build a strong community of people who care for you. That's what makes life worth living. So although there are a lot of conservative people involved in this film, including Jimmy Stewart himself, at the same time, this film really doesn't promote conservatism or capitalism in any way. So Judge Dredd and Fight Club are pro-conservative. It's a Wonderful Life might be pro-conservative. That is the absolute amazing list we have just read. And it just shows you how conservatives like the last one will try and twist anything to suit their agenda. And like I said, fair enough, there are films on that list that I won't argue against. I'm not gonna get into a big debate of a conservative who wants to read Lord of the Rings as pro-conservative, but it's absolutely laughable how they took something like Judge Dredd and thought the movie was promoting the judges and then take something like Fight Club and think Fight Club is promoting masculinity and how great that version of masculinity is. It just shows fundamentally conservatives cannot analyze art because like I said in many videos about why conservatives make movies the way they do and even comedy to some extent the point of a lot of conservative media isn't to entertain it isn't to criticize it isn't to subvert because conservatives are for the status quo like why would you make a movie commenting on subversive elements in a positive way and even criticizing the system if you are pro the system, right? And that's why conservative comedy often is so terrible because conservative comedy is basically not making jokes. It's basically just saying stuff conservatives agree with. And that is what happens a lot with films. Like conservatives don't really go into a film with a more open mind. They just read it how they want to read it. So conservatives are pro-masculinity. They see something like Fight Club and they think Tyler Durden is awesome. And these underground fight clubs where people beat the hell out of each other all the time. 
that's actually good and showing masculinity to be good, not that it's a commentary on where mental health issues and toxic masculinity and alienation under neoliberalism can actually lead people because they just want to be spoon fed their own ideology and they want their biases confirmed. So at the first sign that something might confirm their own prejudice and bias, they're like, yep, fight club, pro-conservative because I liked fighting, I liked Tyler Durden and it confirmed my own biases about that thing. Therefore, it is a conservative movie. Same with Judge Jed, right? I go into the movie thinking police are awesome. Not only are police awesome, they should probably be given more powers to just, you know, randomly kill people on the street. So I watch Judge Dredd and I see a guy who is a judge, jury and executioner and goes into this poor apartment block and starts just delivering justice to people. And I think that's totally awesome. The bad guys are drug dealers and stuff like that. And he's going in there and just shooting them. So that film is pro-conservative because I like that not realizing that this film and the IP is a criticism of my very own beliefs. So if you wonder why conservatives are so terrible at media analysis, there's just two things to remember. One, what I just said, it confirms their biases. And a lot of the time they go in with tunnel vision. They cannot analyze wider themes. So again, with something like Judge Dredd, because you're taken on this narrative with Judge Dredd being the main character, you don't really analyze anything around the story. You just watch Judge Dredd and you like root for Judge Dredd to win. And that's the film, right? You don't analyze the world. You don't analyze the visuals. You don't analyze what Judge Dredd is trying to actually say about the current state of like American politics or law enforcement. You just see A to B plot, Judge Dredd does things. I'm on Judge Dredd's side. He defeats the baddie. Therefore, Judge Dredd good. And Judge Dredd isn't actually talking about anything else apart from the very, very on-the-nose narrative, which confirms my bias. So I hope I use Judge Dredd to illustrate why conservatives will always come out with insane takes. Like, Fight Club is conservative. Judge Dredd is conservative. Metal Gear Solid is conservative. All these things that have a subversive or left-leaning message or leftist message criticizing the status quo and criticizing the very essence of conservative views, they will interpret as conservative itself because they're just absolutely terrible at analyzing media for various different reasons. So I hope you enjoyed me reacting to both these lists. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.